Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today's review is the HDLRC XJB F440 with the TX20 V2. And you can also get this with the camera as well for 118 bucks from uh, HDLR Tech. So what's interesting about this is, is a couple of things. I mean, actually, it's, it, there's a lot of things interesting. The first thing, of course, is the ESCs. These little, this little 4-in-1 ESC will actually put out 40 amp with a 50 amp burst. It supports D-Shot 1200, 600, 300, 150 plus your multi-shot and I believe uh, I believe uh, 125 and also um, what's the other one? 42. So that that's pretty damn amazing. Um, very amazing. It doesn't have a BEC on the on the um, 4-in-1 ESCs themselves but it does on the um, F4 flight controller. So the F4 flight controller on this is also different than the F428 because they've added extra pads here. Um, so it makes it a lot easier when you want to bring out um, for uh, using the scripts. So if you want to use a Lewis script and stuff on your, on your Tyrannus radio, it's much easier to hook up now. So you don't have to invert anything. You don't have to go through any special... Um, you can just hook it right up. So that's that's kind of nice. Um, the ESCs also are 3 to 5S capable. So that's pretty amazing. And that's great because I plan on using the Hyperion um, HV batteries I got coming. So this will be perfect for that. Um, the F4 flight controller has a, I think it's a 3 amp. Yeah, it's a 5 volt 3 amp BEC, which is amazing. So you'll be able to run the Runcam um, Split version 2 and also the new Runcam Mini, Split Mini, which I have I have a review coming up. I actually have it right here, and that will be the next review. Um, I also noticed, too, that... Well, let me, let me start out with the VTX, actually, because this is also very interesting. They redid the VTX. So now instead of just 200 milliwatts, it goes up to 350 milliwatts. And you can also change the channels right there on your OSD. So that's really, really nice. Um, this also has a built-in uh, uh, BEC, and I think it's 5 volt, 1 amp, if I'm not. Yeah, I think that that's exactly what it is. Um, and then also, too, they included, they, well, they always include these nice little, these nice little um, instructions here, too. So you have, a, and they also have it on their website. So if you go to HDLR Tech, they also have this on their website. But it shows you how to set your... Because when you when you first fire this up, it's in pit mode. You have the VTX, so you actually have to take it out of pit mode with the button right here, and then you know change your um, change your power output, and then you can also change your channel there. You can do it on your OSD. Um, but oh, in here you also have your frequency chart here, so that's kind of nice. Um, but if you go to HDLR Tech. If you want to see a bigger version of any of the, because um, you can't read these or, or something like that, they're hard to read um, if you have, you know, older eyes, you can go to HDLR Tech and they have full blown up uh, wiring diagrams for all of their FCs and stacks. I also noticed too here, they, they included a 35 amp, 1000 uh, microfarad capacitor. That's a Horkin <laughs> capacitor, but if you think about it, you're pushing 40 amps through here, you know, and if you're using anything with braking or anything like that, um, you're going to get some voltage spikes. So it's always use your capacitor. Um, it's, it's a huge, it's, it's huge. And it really, it evens out everything very, very nicely. It's very easy to install. It is on the little on the big side. So if you're running a micro, um, you're going to have to maybe chop these a little bit or maybe fold them off the side. I don't know you know, put it somewhere else, but definitely run the capacitor. And a lot of, a lot of combination of stacks and stuff are starting to use capacitors too. Um, not only for the spikes that could actually ruin the uh, four in one ESC, but also to, to get rid of the, any uh, interference with the video. So make sure you run that. Um, also too, I want to point out real quick is that these little pads on here, guys use the two second rule when you're soldering. Okay. Two second rule is real simple. If you put the soldering iron on here um, and you make a connection within two seconds, like one, 1002, and there's a connection there, it's perfect. If it takes three seconds or four seconds, then it's too cold. Um, if it's really, really quick, 
you could actually damage these pads on here. And what happens is two things. You can either scrub off a pad, which I've done as well, or you can actually heat them up to a point where they rise up a little bit from their connection point, and so you end up with an intermittent problem. So you might not notice the first flight, but then the first wreck, all of a sudden it doesn't work, so on and so forth. So be really, really careful when it comes to soldering these. Um, here's your boot button here. Just make sure to use your fingernail on these. Don't move your fingernail around or you can actually um, remove it from the board. So, you know, that, that's happened before with me as well. I also noticed too with the standoff package, they quit putting the plastic standoffs with these. And I, and I like that. That's a great idea. Instead, what they're doing is they're using longer screws. And I noticed that Hobbywing did the same thing. And I've been doing that for some time on my builds. And the reason why is simple. The plastic standoffs can break. And what happens when they break is that you end up putting undue pressure on these plugs here and they end up failing. So when you break it, it puts undue pressure on this plug and it can actually take it right off. I noticed they did a lot better job here on the soldering connections on their pins, but still it's it's a it's a point that can be fragile so it's really nice that they included these longer screws in here and then just use the spacers between i, th I think that's really nice if you want dampening you can easily dampen this with some uh, o-rings you can get at a hardware store so that's really nice speaking of the plug um i noticed too that they didn't use any like hobby wing used some hardened glue right here uh that red hardened glue if you look at my review of the hobby wing these guys didn't, and I'm going to probably go ahead and I want to find out what I can use um, for that because I'd like to actually put some glue on this side and this side, um, something that's non-conductive, and that way it, sure, it, you know, it secures this a lot better from any vibrations. So this is an absolute remarkable product. So um, let's get down to weights here, show you what it weighs. If I can get this to fire up, I'm fire, I'm actually remodeling the hobby room right now. Um, so everything's kind of tore up and I think I left this on accidentally one time. Okay, so ESC FC is 8.9 grams. With the VTX, it's 11.4 grams. With the included standoffs, 14.7 and the capacitor is 16.9 and you also have an antenna which is, I think, is like 2 grams or 1.2 grams, if, I rem if I'm not mistaken. So that's not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. So there you go. And what I like about this, you know, it's just amazing how HDLRC is. They just keep getting better and better and smaller and smaller. And if you look at any of my past videos, you know I have, I'm a big, huge fan of HDLRC. Um, I'm all, also their customer service. I also want to talk about the shipping too. The shipping is really fast. Um, it's not like normal shipping from China. They actually ship it to you very, very fast. Um, and I really appreciate that. But I mean, to be able to put a 40 amp, 50 amp burst with D-Shot 1200 on a 20 by 20, nobody's doing that that I know of. And they make everything look so clean and so nice. Um, I'll probably be going ahead and coating this board um, just for a little bit of waterproofing and stuff because it is winter and we're going into spring here probably in a month or two. Um, all of this is going to fit into this fastback frame. This is the Neato fastback and I, and I absolutely love this thing. It looks like it's from an alien planet. But it's normally made for a 30 by 30 but they also include a plate um, with the kit and I'm going to use that plate to attach here with standoffs and then drill for 20 by 20 and then just mount the stack. Kind of like what I did with the Joppalora. So I'm very, very excited about that. Um, so, you know, with the camera, it, it's really a good deal. You can get this with the ELF camera off of HDLR Tech. And I think it's 118 bucks. The camera will be, usually the cameras are in PAL. I don't think they have the American standard camera, but the PAL camera comes, comes through very, very sharp. Um, you can get it, of course, without the, um, the camera, and you can also get it without the VTX if you don't want the VTX. However, I mean, 350 milliwatts for something this small, plus you can change the frequencies through the OSD. I mean, that's kind of crazy not to get it. So, so please visit HDLR Tech. I want to thank HDLR Tech and um, 
the guys over there for taking care of me. I really, really appreciate it. So, and I really appreciate what they're doing here. So thank you very much for watching guys. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. I will be doing this build here in a couple of weeks. I got, I got another build to do, um, which is another Nido frame that I've been teasing. And I finally got all of the stuff for it just this last week. So I'm going to be starting on that build. But if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments down section down below. Um, if you like the video, guys, um, please subscribe if you haven't. And stay tuned for this video next. This is going to be the Run Cam Mini. And holy moly. Look at that thing. So stay tuned, guys. Thank you very much for watching.